Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Before I start my talk, I would like to thank Father Abby Sebastian and all the parishioners for having me in this beautiful parish. My name is Ken Bowie, and I'm in my fourth year at St. Charles Borromeo Seminary. So I have five more years left before my ordination. So what made me enter the seminary? Well, it took me a very long time to discern this calling, actually. I always had this priestly calling in me ever since I was young, but that calling drifted away once I entered high school and community college. I was studying computer science because I was very proficient at computers, unlike the IT tech support for St. Charles. I didn't enjoy my studies. However, I thought I was missing something in my soul, which was Christ. Ever since I had this special calling when I was young, I would go to church every day and ought to serve during the week to help my pastor out. That's when I felt very attracted to the priesthood and had that fiery passion in me. But as you grow older, you lose that innocence. However, that calling reappeared at the end of my first year in community college. So when the calling to the priesthood reappeared this time, I took a leap of faith and applied to the seminary. My first year at the seminary was a nice and beautiful experience, but also a chaotic experience with COVID-19 happening. And also things turned out for the worse during the summer of 2020 with the death of George Floyd and the violent protests that erupted in the city of Philadelphia, which sadly led to lootings and the people also looted my parents' store. And they lost their livelihoods that summer. It was a very difficult summer for me because I was afraid I was afraid that I might have to leave the seminary to seek work and to support my family. But I put my faith in Christ and things got better over the time. The seminary community heard about this unfortunate event and helped to restore my parents' store to give them back on their feet. It's an experience that I will never forget and I can't thank the seminary enough for going that far to help my parents. So why am I here, you might ask? Well, the reason is I'm asking for two things, prayers and donations. Yes, prayers are always good and a necessity, but we also need donations too, because the seminary is an expensive operation for the archdiocese. Last year, we were able to raise over $3.2 million, and hopefully we can reach $3.4 million this year, despite many obstacles in the real world. All donations will go straight to the operations of the seminary for this year. This helps to keep the seminary operating in good standards, even though this may be a difficult task. I ask from the kindness of your hearts, if you are able to donate, then please do so. It helps us, and you are offering a great sacrifice to God, and it helps the Catholic Church to give birth to new priests that will become beacons of light, emitting hope in this world. So please donate if possible. If not, please continue to pray for our seminarians and our seminary community. Also to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, because it is a very rare and special calling in this world, and we need more good and holy priests to lead the flock as we continue to pray for you. Before I end this, I want to also say this, to always trust in the Lord, even in the most difficult times in your lives. I truly believe that the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways. All we have to do is just to trust and everything will work itself out in the end, just like it did for my parents. Thank you for listening and have a blessed Sunday. Good morning. Today is the Feast of Christ the King. Under the leadership of the Capuchin Franciscan Friars and in union with the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Philadelphia, St. John's welcomes all who are present with us today in praising God and serving God's people. There will be one Mass on Thanksgiving Day at 9 a.m. Consider buying a few gifts, wrapping them, and marking them M, F, or E, male, female, or either. St. John Church serves people who live, work, and visit Center City, Philadelphia. St. John's receives no subsidy from the Archdiocese and is entirely dependent on donations from our parishioners and visitors. We ask our visitors to be generous to our collection so that St. John's can be a vibrant Catholic presence in Center City. In this Mass, we remember in prayer the friends and benefactors of St. John Church and the members of the Sanctuary Guild. The celebrant for this Mass is Father A.B. As we are about to begin Mass, please turn off or silence all cell phones or any other device 
that may cause disruption or distraction. Please rise and join and sing our entrance hymn, number 736, to Jesus Christ our Sovereign King. Number 736, to Jesus Christ our Sovereign King. <clears throat> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, wonderful day. We celebrate uh, the solemnity of Christ the King, the last day of the liturgical year. And let's thank the Lord for this wonderful year that we had in terms of liturgical year. And then still continue to thank God for all the blessings that he is showering upon us upon our family, upon the world, upon our country. Let us thank the Lord. Let's be sorry for all the moments in which we have failed to thank God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty our living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the all creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Let us go. because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father, who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him we created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in, in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is a chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, Save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, as I have told in the beginning, this is the last day or, or end of the uh, liturgical year. And this feast that we celebrate today, the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King, was instituted by pious for pious love and by instituting the feast, he told this, the peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. Wonderful. The peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. This, was, this meant a lot during that time in 1925 because that was just after the First World War. The world was in a turmoil. There were a lot of disturbances politically, economically, socially, and religiously. There were a lot of disturbances during those times, and then this feast was officially instituted. Nations were devastated after the First World War. A wave of modernity was creeping into the church and to the world. Human reason was considered over faith. So no more faith, you know, it's all about human reason and intelligence. So these were kind of the background on which this feast of Christ the King was firstly instituted in the history. So now, when we, when we really look into our own world right now, the, the, the society that we live, it's not, there's no difference. Something very, very same that we are having right now. We hear about war a lot. Still war is going on. There are political unrest in many parts of the world. There is severe famine going on in Somalia. There are a lot of, we are just, Recovering from a, a pandemic, there are a lot of unrest around us. There are a lot of things that we worry about. There are about a lot of things that we, we feel agitated. And amidst all these, we have this feast of Christ the King. What does it mean to us or what does it tell to us? Considering Christ as a King, I, have, I was born and raised in India. It was fun growing up in India, especially in the schools. We were like, we, I had a lot of friends, still have a lot of friends 
from the Hindu religion. So we grew up watching television series or television programs of Hindu kings or gods. You know, there were a lot of fights, a lot of victories, battles in the, in the Hindu religion, especially in Mahabharata, their sacred book Mahabharata and Ramayana, it's all about a battle. It's all about battles, it's all about wars. How God took incarnation and came down to, to kill the enemies or overcome the enemies and then victorious gods, victorious gods. So we were listening or hearing or watching all these wonderful stories about their gods who are victorious, who wins the battle for his people or their people. And when going back to the church on Sundays, or sometimes on weekdays, looking at the altar, we see a God hanging on the cross. Amidst all those victorious gods, there is a God who is over there hanging on the cross, defeated, bending his head, offering everything, his, offering everything to his Abba, his father. And he tells that, I die for your sins. How can we make sense of a God who is totally defeated. There was nobody to save him from the cross, not even his Abba, not even his father. And even the criminals who were beside him was making fun of him. The Jews, those who are down there, or, or the officials or the soldiers were making fun of him. A God completely defeated. How can we make sense of that kind of a defeated God. How can we connect our lives to a defeated God? Because we at least knowingly or unknowingly say, world is not for defeated personalities. World is not for people, those who failed. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. The Freudian theory. We try to apply that everywhere and how can we make sense of that God who was defeated in the eyes of the world dear brothers and sisters Jesus teaches us the basic lessons of humility the basic lessons of love the basic lessons of obedience through his death on the cross let me begin with the basic lessons of love that he has taught us. I think that's what is important for us, for our lives, and for this world right now. I'm sure there are a lot of mothers sitting in front of me. There are a lot of mothers who are here, or fathers who are here. You are ready to sacrifice anything for your children. You're ready to sacrifice anything for your children. We have had or we have listened to the stories of good mothers and fathers, good parents. They have sacrificed their own lives for their children. Does that mean they have failed in their life? Does that mean that they were defeated in their life? Does that mean that they were a failure in their life? No, that was a gain. That was a success. That's a successful life. There's no love greater than giving up one's life for their friends, their children. I think that's the same thing that Jesus did on the cross. He died for the humanity. He died for the love of the humanity. He died for all of us, all of us who are here. And that makes that death more special. And that makes his kingship. I'm sure the sacrifices that the partners make in their family life. I'm sure the sacrifices that the parents takes for their children, I'm sure the sacrifices that the children take for their parents and family, that's all part of that love that Jesus has shown through the cross. It all connects to that cross and we are all part of his his country, his reign, his kingdom. We are all part. We are all his soldiers. Soldiers not in the sense of the world, but soldiers 
who has to continue that mission which was begun on the cross. When me and you take hardships in our life for love, we are continuing his mission which began on the cross. So dear brothers and sisters, our God is not a failed God. Our God is not a defeated God. Our God is someone who has shown a counterculture. A counterculture. I think that's the same mission that we have to continue. The world tells us that those who win are the successful personalities. No, at times we may have to we may have to make sacrifices. At times, we may have to fail so to win. And that's what Jesus teaches us through, through this feast. That's what church wants us to know. In this world of the survival of the fittest, we want to, we want to show a counter witness. How can we win by failing? How can we win by failing? Dear brothers and sisters, let us take this to our own lives. As we move forward this week, let us reflect how Jesus humbly accepted that failure so to make his children free. Let us take, to, take these to our reflection. And as we move forward this week, let us make sense of that let us make sense of that cross in our lives, in our family lives, in our community lives, in our faith lives. Amen. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus is our king, but he comes to us in humility and with mercy. As king, as king, he helps us in our weaknesses, confident that we are cared for by God in every circumstance. Let us now offer our prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that it will proclaim to all that Jesus is king of the universe and that all are invited to share in God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mayor Kinney, the Philadelphia City Council, and for all who work for the city of Philadelphia, that they will help the people of our city and that their efforts will keep everyone safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students of St. Charles Seminary, who are preparing for priesthood, deaconate, and church ministry, that they will be given the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who are separated from one another because of anger, divorce, or grudges, 
for peace in families, and that this Thanksgiving celebration will be a time of reconciliation and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will be forgiven for their sins and find a home in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the friends and benefactors of St. John's and the members of the Sanctuary Guild, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all benefactors of St. John's Church, for the intentions in our book of prayer, and for those intentions that each of us now offers in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, help us to devote ourselves to Christ, who is our King and Lord. Hear our prayers presented to you in his name, Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 344, Spirit and Grace. Number 344, Spirit and Grace.
bear my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and uni universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Until you come again 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we relay for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should remember my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 349, The Supper of the Lord. Number 349, The Supper of the Lord. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The brothers and sisters, before we go, thank you once again for coming for this Eucharist. And thanks to T.J. and Annette for helping us with the hymns. Thanks to Ken for talking to us about his vocation and seminary life and all the best for your uh, rest of your formation. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let's go and glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 733, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Number 733, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Amen.